and be exceedingly glad in it because God is, how do you say, shown up, shown up good. God is shown up, shown up good. Amen. Um, hey, we, we're going to talk about something I believe the only way that can happen is through grace, and that is growing. And uh, when we grow, you can grow in a lot of things. You can grow in bad stuff, you know, if you're not careful. But we, we're going to talk about growing in grace today. And um, uh, good God bless you. Those of you in Cyprus, you know, I'm, I'm always thrilled to hear when I and I read Genesis 14. Uh, and Melchizedek that blessed Abraham by saying that just blesses me that, you know, you know, it's a blessing when people come up to you and they they say some good things to you. They they minister to you and and, and it's a blessing. Um, that's pretty awesome. And so I I want to I want to say some things to you. I'm not you know, we don't participate in these morning confessions because somehow or another we think it's like, you know, uh, magical. We do it because it's a blessing to do it. You know, we're blessed to be a blessing. And so I send out blessings to you guys today. Those of you from uh, let's see what you call in flowery branch here. Praise God. God bless you guys. Um, we send blessings to Tampa, Florida. What an amazing time last week up uh, Tampa, Florida. We say you're blessed Miami. You're blessed today. We send blessings to those of you in Miami. God bless the world changes nation in Kenya, South Africa, Australia, the world changes Australia church. God bless you. And, uh, we're just, you know, we're just sending out blessings. Abuja, Nigeria, New Mexico, Newton, Texas, Chicago, Las Vegas. You are blessed in Jesus name. Kennesaw, Sparta, Tennessee, Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Sanford, Florida. Over in Cali, um, we send blessings to you guys today, to Trinidad, Fayetteville, Georgia, the United Kingdom. Gilroy, we send blessings to you guys today. Uh, Ocala, Florida, we send blessings to y'all today. Praise God. You know, in Georgia, we say y'all. Uh, <laughs> Detroit, Villarica, we send blessings to you today. Say that you're blessed. Augusta, Botswana, we say that you are blessed. Carrollton, Georgia, Kendall, Washington, Lagos, Nigeria. In Maryland, you are blessed today. Virginia, you are blessed today. Uh, yeah, man. Boise, Idaho, we send blessings to you guys today. Grand Rapids, Michigan, we send blessings to you guys today. We say you're blessed. Yeah, I know it's I know it's cold in Kansas. Amen. We send blessings to you in cold Kansas, man. And may this this time together warm you up, amen. Kona, Hawaii, we send blessings to y'all today. Rochester, Los Angeles. Germany, we say you're blessed today in Jesus' name. Good morning. Blessings to those of you in Idaho, New Orleans. Um, we send blessings to you today in Jesus' name. New Jersey, Jazzy, we send blessings to you today. El Paso, we say you're blessed today. Yeah, man, God's my rock too. Praise God. Illinois, you're blessed today. Cincinnati, you're blessed today in the name of Jesus. Lithonia, Georgia, in the house. Temple, Texas, in the house this morning. And we send blessings to you guys in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Riverside, California, you're blessed. Blessings uh, to you guys in India. Uh, love you guys so much. Cypress, Texas, Florida, Houston. You know, I'm thinking about it. Uh, we're going to be doing this from Los Angeles on tomorrow. And that's that's going to be different and exciting. It'll be a time change. I'll talk to you about it later, but um, I'll be on a different time zone. So it'll be like one o'clock in L.A., which is our normal 10 o'clock time here. So you might want to make some adjustments. It'll be an extended uh, confession period as I, I teach on. Um, I'm just going to break grace down to the bare 
knuckles. I mean, we have got to know what it is. A lot of people think they really know what grace is and they shout out unfair, unmerited favor. It's so much more. They shout, shout out undeserved favor. It's so much more. And um, tomorrow during our extended uh, time, you might want to uh, make some time for that. I am going to, you know, grace defined. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Grace defined. Happy 76th birthday to somebody. God bless you. Praise God. We send blessings to you for your for your birthday. And uh, yeah, man, it, it's it's just it's good to be alive, isn't it? It's good to be alive today. Praise God. And um, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited. I, I was I was, um, you know, able to get back in the exercise room today and work out with some uh, some bands and, and and do what I could do to get the ball rolling again. And I feel marvelous, just marvelous. And um, yeah, it's, it's good, isn't it? And and just just think about that. Think about that today, your life being led by the Holy Spirit is going to be amazing. Uh, why? Because the Holy Spirit's there. The Holy Spirit is there and your life is going to be amazing. And I, I say again, grace, grace. Oh, my goodness. Grace, grace. And just so excited um, about everything, excited about you and excited about what God's doing in your life. I tell you what, I, I send blessings your way right now. I don't care what you're facing. Don't focus on what you're facing more than you should focus on who you're facing it with. And as long as you're facing the world and all that it has with the Holy Spirit, and God is on your side. That's what God wants to focus on. Last night, Bible study, man, we really talked about that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And uh, last night, I, I was just like, you know, just kind of blown away with this statement that, that I said last night. I probably said it a couple of times. Uh, but it's like God is never going to start the good work in you and leave you alone to finish it. God is never going to start the good work. When did he start the good work? When he when when he saved you by grace, he's he did that. You didn't do that. You didn't bring anything to the table to do that. You know, you don't even know the first thing about it. You just had to believe. You said you you just had to believe, and then God saved you with his grace. It took grace to get you saved. Praise God. It's gonna take grace to change your desires. It's gonna take grace to complete the work on the inside of you. And so the Holy Spirit uh, and the and the grace of God, in fact, several places, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the spirit of grace. And so it's the greatest message that God has ever given mankind. And we absolutely have got we've got to know what this is and and what is about. And we can't just be incomplete in our understanding and our definition of of grace and what it is and what makes this so big is that jesus full of grace and truth i mean how big is how big is is trying to figure jesus out i mean he's so high he's i mean it's so deep it's so wide he just and i and just because he's he's high and deep and wide doesn't mean you don't try to attempt to try to get in that and that's what we're doing we're just we're in it man we're i know me and taffy is and and our church, we're just in our and my spiritual sons and all my family, we're digging deep. We're digging deep. And that would involve you guys that join me here today. We're digging deep, man. We want to know how deep this love is, how high it is, how wide it is. And um, and I am so I am blown away to know and to get revelation on the fact and the truth that God started to work in me. He's not going to leave me by myself to finish the work. So that means he's on board to, to work in me. He's working in me. That's what that means when he says God is perfecting that which concerns you. Uh, we've always like, you know, well, you know, if you're in trouble, God's perfecting that. Well, and that's true. But what God is perfecting, he's completing his work in you. That's what it means. He's perfecting what he started. He's not going to leave you to perfect it. That would be a wreck if he left us to try to perfect something he started. 
Praise God. He started it. He's not going to leave me alone. That's what got me this week. God's not going to leave me alone to finish what he started. And so I'm not alone and I'm never alone because you can't make a commitment like that and disappear. So how is he how is he perfecting and completing and performing? That's a great word. Performing the work he started. How is he doing that? He's doing that through our life experiences. He's doing it through our 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 going to sleep life, our waking up life, our up and down life, our things we encounter life, our you know good times, our bad times, and 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 he's there performing through the grace of God what we need in our everyday life. It's it's not you know growing in grace by you know laying in a cave somewhere and becoming a hermit and and talking in tongues so you fall asleep. <laughs> Oh man, this is bigger than that. God is working in you. And it's it's not gonna be this, you know, oh well, you know, he's gonna work in me while I pray, or he's gonna work in me while I'm uh, you know, uh singing a, a Christian song. Uh, God's gonna work in, God's gonna be working in you when you're getting cussed out. <laughs> yeah, he working in you when somebody hurting your feelings. Well, he's working in you when you you just lost your job. He's working in you when you're tempted to doubt even if he exists. He's working in you when you keep falling back from something he just delivered you out of. He, he He's working in you. You got to understand it's through living. I said that, right? Through living that you find the Holy Spirit working in you. Praise God. Uh, I noticed this. I noticed this this morning and you just check it out and see if, you're, if you've noticed it. But it's almost like um, religion, let's say it that way, religion tries to use sin to bring about guilt and shame to motivate you to do right. That ain't, that ain't going to work. Well, you know, if you do that, that's sin. And so you're supposed to be motivated to do right because I keep pointing out the sin in your life. That's sin, that's sin, that's sin, that's sin, that's sin. And, you know, I'm like, wow, what if we would just spend time pointing out that's Holy Spirit opportunity. He's working right there. Now that's Holy Spirit opportunity. He's working right there. Oh, I fell. He's working right there with that fall. You know, he's working so that you don't keep falling. But he says he's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the Almighty God. It, it, it's, it's, uh, I, I heard, uh, I don't know, years ago, somebody said, well, the Holy Spirit can't inhabit, uh, uh, vessels of sin or dirty vessels. Well, ain't no other kind of vessel for him to inhabit. <laughs> it ain't no other kind of vessel to inhabit because listen, if your vessel was flawless and you, you wouldn't need the Holy Ghost. You wouldn't need him, but we need him and he's working in us. And, and, and that's, that's great news, man. It's just like, live your life, quit beating yourself up, Quit, quit, uh, quit doing all of that stuff and just say, all right, God, help me and, and help me with everything. You know, just when I fall, I shall rise. Why? Cause you're there. When I miss it, I'm going to make it because you're there. It's like, you know, I, I get it now in, in, in my weakness. That's when, when, when I, when he's strong, that's when I'm strong because I, I those, these are all growing opportunities. These are all growing opportunities. Second Peter chapter three and 18, write this down. Second Peter chapter three and 18, but grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him then be the glory, but uh, both now and forevermore. Grow in grace. How many of you are ready to do that? grow in grace i i don't i don't i don't believe there is even gonna be growth unless you do it in grace i i think a lot of people think that they've grown in a lot of different ways uh but i'm talking about really growing and not revisiting certain things i'm talking about growing in grace I, i'm it's gonna it's gonna take grace to grow 
spiritually. I'm not talking about it, but it's going to take grace to grow. Uh, yeah, it's going to take grace to grow. So that's why I said grow in grace. <laughs> I don't know how you really grow if you're not growing in grace. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 2 and 10 says, for we are we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So he's already prepared beforehand and he's working on us to get us there. So here's what I want you to see. God's grace is not bestowed on us because of our good works. You, you, you got to understand that if God's grace was bestowed on us because of our good works, then it wouldn't be a gift. It would be something that was owed to us, something that we earned. So God's grace is not bestowed on us because of good works, but it is bestowed on us to enable us to do the good works that God had in mind for us to do before the creation of the world. Listen to that again. The grace, God's grace is not bestowed on us because of our good works, but it is bestowed on us to enable us to do the good works. It's not doing good works earns your grace. It's getting grace that you don't deserve. So you, you are enabled by that grace to do good works that God has had in mind for us before the foundations of the world. That's big, man. That's big time right there. I, and I, I don't want to just go do works that I'm, you know, I want, I want grace to enable me to do uh, what, what God wants me to do. You know, I don't need no trophy for the good works because it was the grace of God that enabled me to do what, do those good works. And so, you know, wait on the Lord, man. Let, let him grace you to do the good works. Let him grace you uh, to do the thing that he called you to do. That's so, so very, very, very important. Second uh, Peter 3, 13 uh, says, according to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And so that's, that's big time. I always thought that good works that, you know, I just go and do some good works and then that will earn me grace. Well, that's, that's a payment. I'm not going to do that. Praise God in heaven. Um, let's see. There's a pretty cool scripture. Second Peter two eighteen. 18. Uh, he puts it this way. Second Peter chapter two eighteen. He says in the gifts of grace, which under a divine blessing may be increased by using them. Gifts neglected, decrease, but stirred up and used are improved and increase. There is such a thing as growth in grace, ladies and gentlemen, in this sense that every grace as to its act or its exercise act or exercise it being it, it's then capable of growing now let, let me slow up a little bit because this is this is pretty big uh and this is commentary on second peter chapter 3 and 18 grow in the grace uh and in the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ so in this in the gifts of grace there are gifts that come as a result of grace under a divine blessing may be increased by using them gifts neglected decrease but stirred up you 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 begin to use them and they they begin to increase so here's the deal uh god has gifted us with this grace and i am not about to just chill somewhere knowing about the grace of God, but not uh, but, but not activating it through my rest and my dependence on God. Somebody's always asking me, but well, well, what do you do if everything's a gift? Well, you know, I believe, and the highest kind of belief is I rest. Uh, in the middle of all kinds of stuff. I mean, I know what I know God's given me grace. So why am I stressing when I should be resting? And uh, my dependence on upon God, it kind of like keeps me in that rest. I, the, I, um, 
I ran across a book I wrote, I think it was in 2017, called The Radical Life of Grace. I promise you, if you don't have that book, get it. The Radical Life of Grace. Man, that thing, it, it, it's a, I wanted it to be a textbook. It's kind of like a textbook for the gospel of grace. And I cover everything. And also in that book, I cover, I mean, there are questions and answers and things to make you think. But I cover several chapters on how to how to be delivered from the shame that you walked in before you understood the gospel of grace and uh how to rest i i found out that the rest is is huge how to rest how to uh, you know that that doesn't mean rest from work it means rest in work yeah how to rest in work how to how to have a, a life of um of rest and i think at, at when you're at rest that's when you see god's best when you're constantly dependent on god that's your your everyday proclamation and your everyday conscious thought um i promise you i i I, I don't know. Maybe I got so busy. I'm, I'm trying to even figure out when I, when did, when did I release it. But the radical life of grace, it is radical. And it talks about so many things. But anyway, they don't have it in stock. Tell them to get it in stock, man, because we 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 need to we need to understand that. Get get a hold of that. Make it like it needs to be made. But anyway. Uh, we have sufficiency through the grace of God and we can we we we. Our sufficiency is not of our own. Our sufficiency is of him. You know, I'm not going to be talking about my sufficiency in myself. Because in myself, I am I am grossly insufficient. <laughs> I am grossly insufficient. But what that does is just keeps my mind focused on his sufficiency. I mean, if I'm insufficient. And and he's sufficient, then it would probably do me well to go over here where the sufficient one is and depend on his sufficiency. And so when great things happen in your life, don't start patting yourself on the back, man. I'm, I'm telling you, it's th there's liberty when you stop trying to please people. There's liberty that comes when you stop trying to impress everybody. There's liberty where you can just, I'm I'm good, I'm cool. You know, it, it's just, it it is liberty there. And a lot of people won't come to know liberty uh, until they come to understand that they're not all of what they thought that they are. You just need to just kind of let that go, uh, grow spiritually, humble yourself uh, under the mighty hand of God and and watch him work and do some stuff. So, uh, yeah. So that's 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 the deal for today. Um, we'll do some confessions tomorrow. I declare your Psalms ninety one equipped in the name of Jesus, dude. If you're not Psalms ninety one equipped by now, after what a couple of years, <laughs> we're just maintaining it, man. We're just letting the devil know that we are safe in god's arms we are safe in his arms uh, the god of heaven takes care of us we find rest in the shadow of almighty uh we dwell in the shelter of the most high god uh god rescues us from every trap he protects us from every disease we're covered and protected by his outstretched arms he's faithful to his promise we will not fear he rewards me with long life. He shows me his salvation. I declare that over your life right now, that all is well. All is well in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, you guys are going to have a great day today. And uh, we love you. We thank God for you. And uh, all is well. Yep. Okie dokie. <laughs> love you guys so much we're growing in grace today god bless you